Well, I'm going to demonstrate loading a couple of um, 40 S and W using Unique as a powder. About seven grains is what I'm using, which I already tested about ten of them. It seems to be a nice little snappy load, but it's not anywhere near a max load. I can't remember what the max load is for Unique in this particular um, round, which I'm using Nosler Sporting Handgun. Um, 150 grain so I'm thinking it might be like 7.8 or 8 grains is a max so I'm not going too crazy I'm using Winchester small primers problem I've had with unique is it doesn't meter or the darn so I guess the main reason I'm demonstrating a couple rounds here is I'm going to show how I usually use Unique. Um, my Lee Pro Auto Disc is not very reliable with Unique. Now with Winchester 231, it's spot on every time. First round, 100th round, 300th round, they're all identical. But with the great big flakes that Unique is has, the shape of it is, um, I just can't seem to get the meter very well but it is a good powder even though it is an older powder so I like to use it so what I've decided to do since basically I end up since I don't trust the Lee Pro Auto Disc at all I end up weighing every single round that I load so since I do that anyhow I pretty much decided well why not just use the lead dipper that comes with my lead die set and then um, trickle in what I need. One full dipper gives me between 3.9 and 4 grains so I take one full dipper dump it in my little pan um, and then I fill the dipper up again and I get pretty close to what I need and from there I just pretty much tap with my finger and trickle it in. It's kind of a slow process for 50 rounds well, it might take me an hour, but I'm usually off doing other things. I'm usually down here in between sets, weightlifting. I'll come down and load some rounds, and I'll go back and lift. So it's not like I'm at it constantly for an hour. But anyways, I'll just kind of demonstrate. I've already got a pan of about 50 right there. Took the decapping rod out of this since I've already used my universal decapper to decap these. The reason that I did that is I ran into a lot of trouble with Fiacci ammo with the uh, flash holes being way off center. And the first decapping rod that I had in this die ended up bending because of it. So I've decided. From this, I gotta, I gotta zero this first. Talk about paying attention where you're going, but I decided that rather than bend my expensive decapping rod in my lead resizing die, I just got a universal resizer. I use that to decap now, especially 40. So the first dipper ran at four grains, usually 3.9 to 4 with the first. And then I dip about half in really quick. Actually that was that was perfect. <laughs> I stopped right on seven grains. I'll probably never do that again, but then I'll take it. One thing that I found, these lead dies, for the price, are some pretty nice dies. 
everybody dis disparages lead products for some reason. And I will admit, at times, some things are a little bit of a pain, but for the most part, I've never really had much trouble with anything that has to do with the lead stuff. You might have to mess around with a little bit more at times, but um, this whole press cost me all of $102 at Grafts and Sons earlier this summer. And basically I can buy six of these for one Dillon, and yeah, obviously the Dillon's a top of the line Cadillac, but if I'm going to spend that much money on reloading equipment, I'm probably going to spend that money on race car parts anyways. Yep, right on the money. So now the first two I measured, so from there on out I'll just basically go to town. That just dropped a primer. That does happen sometimes. I'm not really sure why. I it all the time. I gotta find that before I put my chair leg on it. But probably wouldn't be so good. <laughs> this is definitely a slow process. I wish I could get this unique to meter well in the Pro Auto Disc. And I've talked to other people that have other types of powder metering systems and they all say the same thing. They just can't get a consistent charge with the unique because of the large flakes. So basically every single one of these is exactly seven grains. So it's worth it to me to take a little bit longer of a time have it all accurate. It's not like I personally am such a great shot that I need every rod to be within 0.1 grains. But the fact of the matter is, most of what I do, I try to be as precision as possible, and reloading is going to be no different. So I don't want something varying 0.3 or 0.4 grains, even though it may be safe. If I'm loading seven grains, well, they better be seven grains. Simple as that. On this little uh, scale that I have here, this MTM scale, as of this point anyways, has been absolutely flawless. I didn't show it on camera, but I always check it. I've got a set of different weights that I have that I always check. Check it with, I check it with each individual weight, and then I try to stack them to uh, get the closest to whatever load I'm running as I can. And then I compare it also, I have a one of the lead balance beam scales, which is quite accurate, but it takes forever. So I generally don't use it for weighing charges, I just use it for verifying the scale. I always keep fresh batteries in it. I think that may be the key. Fresh batteries, and I guess it's my understanding you don't want to use lithium batteries in it because lithium, a new lithium cell is getting towards probably 1.7 volts, I think, and I guess the scale doesn't like that. So I've used regular alkaline batteries, usually Duracell or some other decent name brand. So far, I've had no trouble with it. going slow here because I'm talking. I really can't chalk, 
talk and chew gum at the same time, so it's kind of hard to reload and talk at the same time for me, so just take things good and easy. But as you can see, it's a reasonably quick process. One thing I've noticed with the Pro Auto Disc, if you start running this thing around real quick, you start losing accuracy on your powder charge, even with 231, I think, because of. See, also, notice that it didn't index correctly if you go too fast. That's why I usually kind of go at a fairly slow pace. But, anyways, even with the 231, sometimes the loads tend to vary a little bit if you get that thing rolling around really quick so I generally try not to do that other than just demonstrating right there what will happen if you go too fast it overruns that little ball bearing spring loaded ball bearing and also I guess what probably happens is the little chambers that the powder goes down into and sits there waiting for the whole disc to pull forward, it probably packs that in a little bit more tightly so you end up having a little bit more of a variance. It's usually not more than about 0.2 grains, but like I said, I'm more about precision than just speed. So I try to just cycle things at a reasonably good pace. And, you know, I've already done seven here just pretty much in no time while I'm talking on camera if I get myself in a rhythm where this is all what I'm doing I can do that loading tray of 50 pretty quickly but after I use this dipper for a while I can get pretty quickly I can get that charge right at the seven grain mark. Usually the first few rounds it takes a little bit longer and I get kind of a feel for it. Hit right on. Not even a single loop, not even a one thousandth variance on that. There, in one of these cases, I have to push forward. If you saw one of my earlier videos, I explained why I have to do that. I have to do that. I'm starting to wonder if maybe the ram and the press itself isn't off because I have to do that in every round that I load, whether it's 45, 30 06, 24, or 223, everything I've loaded so far. And I have a different turret for each one of them. so it's not like I'm using the same turret. Even just taking that dipper and just dunking it right in there without really even trying to get it perfect, and it's still 3.8 to 4 grains every time I've done that in the first, first scoop. So, if I could find the next size dipper, it would hopefully be what I would need, it would probably be a lot better. size up might just be too big it's hard to tell but anyways I'm not going to bore you with that just thought I'd show about 10 rounds there and just show how easy it is to use that dipper and yeah I'm certainly not going to do a thousand rounds an hour or 500 an hour but I did 10 of them pretty quickly there so that was with me yakking and talking so 
give it a try. Don't t don't turn your nose up these these dippers that actually work pretty well, especially with some of these powders that are hard to meter. Well, I'm going to get back to loading the rest of these.